So one of the things I really like to do uh, back in July, actually, late July, is take the nets off my brassicas. And the reason that I like to do that is because I want to manage the plants. Now, what does it mean by managing the plants? I just mean looking at them, really, and dealing with the issues that I find on a day-to-day -day basis, rather than being surprised when I look underneath the nets and find it's a real mess. You know, there's loads of insect damage under there, or there's lots of blister spot or something like that. So today I thought I'd just show you around what I actually am doing right now in terms of managing. Now yesterday I found two or three leaves on the collets that had cabbage aphid. That's my, oh it's the worst of the pests that we have to deal with here. I just pull those leaves off and compost them. But today I've got some blister spot to deal with. I've got a lot of low lying leaves that are reducing the airflow under the plants and also shading out some of my underplants. So yeah, let's just take a look at what managing the brassicas means at this time of year. So early September. So it's nice to have an excuse actually to tidy up the brassicas. And right now they've got white blister, which is just a fungal disease on the underside of the leaves. And it does, it, the spores can survive in the soil for a few months but I'm not really that worried about that because I'll be clearing this bed, planting pea shoots in it uh, before I plant uh, brassicas in it again next year. So I think by then it'll all have died off and I think it'll be fine in the compost because I generally leave at least a year uh, before I reuse my compost back in the garden. So I'm just taking off all these lower leaves and just leaving the good quality leaves at the top and the advantage of that is that I've got all of this all these leaks around the bottom and so that will give them loads more light so that's exactly what I wanted to achieve there's still plenty of leaf on here to bring all the sprouts and everything to maturity some of these sprouts actually are kind of ready to harvest obviously they're loose but that's fine I don't know if you've ever tried loose sprouts, but I love them. I actually prefer them to tightly um, wrapped sprouts. They're just gorgeous. So uh, yeah, I'll be enjoying those pretty soon. And I'll probably just harvest this little plant because it's kind of in the way there. But uh, yeah, once I've got access through here, obviously I can get in and do the weeding and all these little leaks will grow on now much happier but the only downside to taking these off now is that these lower leaves were kind of supporting the plants on these canes so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this little frame out and I'm going to use these fence pins to support the bigger plants so I'm going to be generating a huge amount of compost today whilst I work my way through all these leaves and I find that the ratio in brassica leaves is about right in terms of greens to browns. The stems have got plenty of carbon woody material in them and the leaves are obviously greens so I don't generally add much to them. But just to be on the safe side I will get this stable bedding and just one of these big containers of stable bedding is about right I think for a whole compost bin full to mix with these woody brassica leaves. Obviously well chopped up just like that. So now I'm going to work my way all along these bristle the sprouts. And doesn't that look so much better? I can actually walk down my path now without scraping my legs on the winter squash stalks. And as I said, all these leeks look a bit floppy, but they're going to grow on nicely now. They've got plenty of growing time left. So uh, yeah, they've got loads of light now. And the kind of general metric that I've been using for taking these leaves off because they don't have blister spot is would I eat the leaf? So I would, at a push, I would eat that leaf. I'd much prefer to eat that leaf, but I would eat that one. So I'm just taking off any leaf that uh, I wouldn't eat. And obviously use common sense. If that meant taking all the leaves off the plant, you wouldn't do that. I've got some sort of problem here, rotting on this one. No idea what's going on there. I don't know whether I'll be able to save that. 
But anyway, I'm just going to leave it for now, see if the plant fixes itself. And, oh yeah, so I thought I'd just show you these. There's a few, couple of winter squash here. These are not ready. So these are, this is all still too green. This is too green. It's too smooth. So you kind of wait for harvesting these until they've dried off a bit. And when they've dried off, they'll go in my little greenhouse. I'll close the door. It'll be nice and warm and leave them in there for a week or so just to finish the curing and then I will put them in my shed frost free a little bit damp for them but I've got a fan as well that just keeps the shed really well ventilated so uh, but they're looking good I'm really happy with those there's quite a few of them strangely there's a completely different type of squash here but still looks okay. Same same seed packet as all the others. But they're all pretty much the same. All not quite ready yet for harvest. So next I'm gonna move on to these collets. These have also got leeks under plantage, you can't see them. So again, I'm just gonna take all these lower leaves off. Some of these are beautiful quality and those are good enough to eat. Um, but further down here, these are not good enough to eat, so these are the ones that will be coming off. Oh, it's a big job. I'm going to have my lunch. So that's almost looking better. Such a lot of debris down there on top of all those leeks. <laughs> Honestly, when I look at those leeks, they're such a mess. But I'm still confident that they'll pick up now they're getting loads of light and we'll get a good crop. I'm almost done now. This is the purple sprouting broccoli. At least the first bed, give that a little bit of a trim. I only did it a couple of weeks ago, so it's still looking pretty good. The plants are so limp, you see how limp they are. These leaves are so dehydrated. We just had no rain. Exactly the same issue here with these leeks is that you know part of the reason why they're struggling, apart from the shade from these collets, is that this ground is just absolutely, completely and utterly dry. And the collets don't mind so much because their roots go down so deep. But I could water for hours on end and probably still not rehydrate this bed. So we're all finished and I've taken the fence pins that were used for the frames and just reused them for the supports. So all the plants are supported now and I, I've got to say, I do prefer to support the plants. I find that uh, I get a much more predictable and quality harvest when the plants are upright and not just falling over each other. And it's hard work. This is what I would count as a day's work on the allotment rather than pure pleasure. So I hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel. It's hot. I'm going to have a nap. See you soon.